In this video, we will see how to create a general purpose user for our Oracle Autonomous Database. Let's log in by browsing to oracle.com slash cloud slash sign in dot html. First, you'll need to enter the cloud account name that we created in a prior video and click next. Now, enter the email address and password you used to create your Oracle Cloud account and click sign in. A link to your database may appear on your recently visited tile. If not, you can search for Autonomous and access your database by following the link in the search results. Here, we see that my database is currently stopped. This will happen if your database is unused for 7 consecutive days. Let's go to the database details page by clicking the link in the first column so we can start it up. We'll choose more actions and click start. It may take more than a minute for your database to start. The orange tile that reads ATP will turn green when your database is ready. Now click database actions and wait for your options to load. Let's click the SQL tile to see which database user is currently logged in. You can run the statement show user and Oracle will respond with the username of the current user. We can also see that username in the upper right corner. The user named admin is a powerful user that has broad privileges in the entire database. It's a good idea to have a less privileged account for day-to-day -day use or for working on particular projects. Let's create one named Connor now. Let's click on the menu button in the upper left corner and choose database users. Then click create user to add a new user. I'll enter a username of Connor. You might use your own first name. I'll choose a strong password, at least 12 characters in length, using upper and lower case letters and some numbers. I'll also enable web access so this user will have authority to connect directly to the database through the online tools. I'm not expecting to do much with this account, so I'll set a data quota of 25 megabytes. Now I'll show the code that this command will run so I can copy it for a future example. You'll be able to copy the code to create a similar user account through the link that accompanies this video. Closing the code view, I'll now create the user account. Next, I'll create another user account by modifying the SQL I copied while creating the account for Connor. I'll go back to the SQL editor and paste in the code. I'll need to change every occurrence of Connor to the new account name, which is student, being sure to match the capitalization from the copied code. Now, I'll run the modified code to create the student user account. Although I just created a couple of user accounts, I'm still logged in as the admin user. In a prior video, I created a table to hold information about authors. Now, I'll grant the select permission on the author table to the student account so I can have something to query when I log in with those credentials. Let's see how to access my autonomous database directly using the student account just created. For this, I'll need the URL created for this user, so I'll navigate back to the database users page. I'll search for the student account and copy the URL. Now, I'll open an incognito window so you can see that I'm accessing the database directly without being logged into the Oracle Cloud Console. I'll paste in the URL for this database and supply the username and password. Once authenticated, I'll navigate to the SQL editor where I can access the database as the student user. I can access the author table that is owned by the admin user, but as you can see, I'm now logged in as the student user. Let's create one more account. I'll close my incognito window to return to the session of my admin user account. Using the link supplied with this video, I'll bring in the SQL to create another user account. This one is called Professor and has the same permissions as the admin account. 
Your professor will probably want the URL to access your database and check on your progress. So let's go back to the database users page one final time and copy the URL link for the professor account. So that's it. We've created a few different user accounts. When your autonomous database is running, it will be faster to access your database directly using the URLs we've seen today because you can bypass logging into the Oracle Cloud Console, so you may want to keep track of them. However, if your database stops because of extended disuse, you will need to log in to the Oracle Cloud Console to start it up again. Good luck working with your autonomous database in the Oracle free tier.